Introducing the world's first fire umbrella. The world's first umbrella that not only deflects rain, but actually vaporizes it. With 3,000 degree flames shooting in 360 degrees above you, you'll stay dry and stay warm. If you were one of the original backers for the air umbrella, you're going to love the fire umbrella. Hey everyone, today I'm going to be testing out my fire umbrella. Now this is an umbrella that shoots out fire at all angles out the top of it in order to vaporize rain so that you don't get hit by the rain. Now the inspiration for the fire umbrella came from a previous video where I showed you the air umbrella. Now the air umbrella shoots air 360 degrees out the top of it in order to deflect rain. And in that video, I talked a little bit about the math behind how much air is needed to actually deflect rain. And that umbrella didn't actually work very well. You had to have extremely high flow rates to even get the slightest deflection of rain. Now in the comments section, there were a lot of people who had ideas on how to make it better, most of them not very good. But one comment stuck out to me. It said, well, why not instead of shooting air out the top of the umbrella, you shoot fire out the top and the fire will just vaporize the rain before it can hit you. And right then and there, the fire umbrella was born in my brain and I knew I had to make it. So let me show you how I built it and then we'll see how well it works. Now the end of the air umbrella is the important part. It has slits in 360 degrees around the top of it. So this is where the fire is going to be coming out. This is part of the spreader that will help spread the flame in a 360 degree direction. Now the bottom of the umbrella is just as important as the top. In order to get an extremely strong, bright blue flame coming out the top here, you have to have a good air ratio. Now if I just flowed propane gas out the top here, it would just be a low temperature orange flame and it wouldn't shoot out very hard. So, but what I've done at the bottom here is a method to introduce air into the system so that you get a little bit of mixture of air that gets entrained with the um, propane gas as it goes down the umbrella so that when it reaches the end, it already has a higher ratio of air with it and when it hits the outside air, then it can really burn nice and bright blue. But you don't want to mix too much air in with it. If you get this too much open, then the air propane mixture will be enough that it, the flame can actually travel down inside the umbrella and you don't want that. So you mix in just enough ratio of air so that it has a pretty good ratio but it can't burn and then when it hits the air outside the umbrella it can burst into flames. And so you get a strong, nice, bright blue flame coming out in all directions. Okay, why don't we go test out our fire umbrella. Let's see if it can actually vaporize rain. Okay, so let's see if this actually blocks the water. So it's just hot water coming out the bottom, but it's definitely not vaporizing it. On the top of the umbrella it does. Let's try just a little bit. So a light mist now. Okay, so why weren't we able to get the fire umbrella to work? Even though we had an extremely hot blue flame shooting out all sides of the umbrella, it still wasn't able to vaporize even the smallest stream of water droplets coming down below it. Some of it got vaporized, but most of it was just kind of warm or hot water droplets coming out the back. The main reason this doesn't work very well is how much energy you actually need to put into water in order to boil it. In order to compare how much energy it takes to actually vaporize water, put it this way. To completely vaporize one liter of water, let's say the liter of water was already at 100 degrees Celsius, just to vaporize it, it would take 2.3 million joules. Now to compare that to making a car go from zero to 60 miles per hour, the minimum amount of energy needed to make a car go from zero to 60 miles per hour is 360,000 joules. 
So 360,000 joules to make an entire car go from zero to 60 miles per hour, compared to 2.3 million joules to make water, only one liter of water, completely vaporize. So realistically, in order for those tiny little water droplets to completely vaporize, it has to be exposed to that fire for a long time. But realistically, when it's passing through that fire, it's only passing through that flame for only a fraction of a second. And so it's not in there long enough to even heat it up enough to get to boiling po point, let alone vaporize it. Now the fire umbrella has similar problems as the air umbrella, but actually worse. The air umbrella had the problem of you're actually just spraying rain in everyone else's faces around you. But with the fire umbrella, you have the problem of spraying fire at everyone else around you and probably lighting your own hair on fire. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can know when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.